Last week, thousands of North Carolina public school teachers and school support staff came to Raleigh to let lawmakers know they do not have adequate resources they need to support their students. Some teachers focused on textbooks and school supplies, others focused on the lack of school support like nurses, school counselors, and school psychologists. I went down to the march and rally with our camera to talk to participants directly on why they came. Take a look. the whole wide world. This is teacher territory. One year ago, we were here in this parking lot uh, before the big teacher rally in May of last year. So here we are again. Mark Jewell, president of NCAE. Sure. Welcome to Education Matters. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. And I appreciate you being here and covering this very important day for us. What's it feeling like to you? It was like, well, you know, today does the last night. We have 34 districts that are closed. Uh, the enthusiasm is at fever pitch. It's all over social media. All the media is here today. We can be proud of the fact that the citizens of North Carolina are coming together for the common good, and it's the common good of public schools. What's going to transpire today? What do you hope to accomplish? Well, what I hope to accomplish is that the legislators hear us and understand that we are doing what's best for our children and our classrooms and for our communities and for our schools. It is extreme, extremely important that our communities are strong, that our schools are strong, and that makes stronger students. And so we want to make sure that our legislators back up their words by putting everything in the budget that we need for our children. Why are you here today? I'm here because I know that my students need my support. Um, I'm here because I know that I need to talk to the legislators because they're the ones who can give us that kind of support. Teachers just want to have funds. We just want to have money to supply with our students the things that they need and to make sure their education is relevant and personalized. We're the largest high school in our county and we only have a nurse three days a week. That means that I administer band-aids. That means I'm the one or the secretary's the one that has to handle sick kids. The school that I taught in literally ran out of toilet paper. I have about 2,200 between four different schools and the recommended ratio is one psychologist for every 500 to 700 students. What kinds of issues are our young people dealing with today? Um, we have lots of suicidality, lots of self-harm, um, low self-esteem, lots of testing pressure leading to anxiety. It's a lot because our kids need, a lot of their needs are not being met at home and so they come into school with a lot of baggage per se and it's just us having to support them as best as possible just to focus on getting an education. The stakes are high in education today. It is hard for kids to get into college. The pressure is really mounting on them and I see a lot of anxiety and mental health issues that I don't have time to deal with because of all the pressures that are put on me and there aren't enough other personnel in the school building to do so. We're here with Senator Wiley Nickel representing in Wake County. I, I, you're marching with the teachers today. Why? I support public education. I ran for the state senate because I support investing in public education. That's what we got to do. That's what everybody out here is demanding. And uh, I hope my colleagues will listen to everybody here. In the North Carolina Constitution, the state is obligated to provide a free, good education for the students of North Carolina. For the last eight years, the North Carolina legis legislature has abdicated that responsibility and it's pay up time. They've got plenty of money for tax breaks for corporations and, and wealthy individuals. Meanwhile, school buildings are crumbling. Kids are going without. It literally says in the North Carolina professional teaching standards that teachers is under the leadership role. We have to advocate for our students, for the policies that will positively affect their learning. We have to be their voice. We're here to make sure that our students are supported in every way possible, um, whether it's um, more nurses and social workers and counselors to um, teachers that are supported enough to be the best teachers that they can be for them. I think that we need to have education available to everyone as opposed to just those that can afford it. We're with, uh, with the Teacher of the Year from Brunswick County. What's your name? Claire Harrington. All right. So tell me why you're here today. We need teacher retention. We need a reason for people to come to Brunswick County other than just the beach. We need advancement for our teachers because there's a glass ceiling that we can't break through. We need respect from all, all our legislators. We obviously have people that support teachers constantly, but we need people, the legislator, to, to start respecting education as well. I think it's important for the, teacher, the, the force of teaching to represent the students that we teach. Um, and you'll find that a lot of our te teachers are white females, but that's not the population of students we teach. So I think it's very important that the population of the teachers represents the population of the students. Even though they 
have given some small raises in the past. Um, what we do uh, is not nearly, nearly compensated enough. A lot of the uh, newer teachers coming in, they learn from the veteran teachers and the veteran teachers are actually leaving in droves. So there won't be anybody here to bring up those new teachers. I'm here because of my students. I'm here because we're in the 21st century and we need 21st century devices and materials to teach the children so they will be prepared for what's coming in the future. We have to prepare children for jobs that are not even created yet. And we can't do it from the things that we had 30, 40, 50 years ago. We've got to bring these kids up to the 21st century. Right now, it looks really bad to be a teacher. It looks hard. And if people don't want to come to, and because it's so hard, then they're not going to want to be a teacher. You look how many people are here. Look how many teachers, educators are here. It's not a small problem. This is a big problem. And we're going to keep fighting until we get what we need. Students do come first. But if you want them to be able to compete against the world, then make sure that they have the quality staff and teachers that they need to do that with. We're rallying for more funding for our schools, more funding for our teachers, the master's advanced degree program brought back in, and for our retired people. Well, I'm here with former Congressman Bob Etheridge. Uh, you're all decked out in red. You're here surrounded by teachers. Uh, why are you here today? Well, I believe deeply in public education, and as you well know, having served as state superintendent but an advocate of education, I said I would come for those teachers who couldn't come and those because they wouldn't turn schools out. Now, as a former state superintendent, I mean, you've, you've obviously seen sort of what how things have changed in North Carolina. Do you think that North Carolina is, is still places the same value on public schools and public education as it did when you were state superintendent? I'm not sure that they do. I think the average person does. Unfortunately, they aren't in the General Assembly. Right. Uh, legislators ought not to be forced into doing what's right. They ought to be the advocates for it. That ought to be the first thing you fund, and you ought to figure out that that is important. That's an investment in the long term. Uh, far more than giving a few people a tax break, you ought to be investing in the future. We know teachers care more about outcomes than incomes as educators. You do so much more than just teach math and reading and science. You boost your students' self-esteem. You comfort them in time of trouble. You instill in them a sense of purpose and direction. The founding father John Adams said that laws for liberal education of youth, especially of the lower class people, are so extremely wise and useful that to a humane and generous mind, no expense for this purpose would be thought too extravagant. Article 1, Section 15 says the people have a right, not just children, but the people have a right to the privilege of education. And it is the duty of the state to guard and maintain that right. In other words, the legislature under the current majority is not guarding and not maintaining the right. So we are constitutionally right for protesting here. It was quite a day. Um, very inspiring to talk to so many of those teachers and leaders. After a brief commercial break, we're going to be back to talk with two education policy experts who are going to discuss the House budget that passed last week in the midst of this teacher rally and see how some of the teachers' top demands fared so far. But before we go to break, see if you can answer this question. True or false, last year North Carolina became the first state in the country to pay most of its state employees a $15 minimum wage, about $30,000 a year. Public school employees, though, were excluded from that raise. Education Matters is brought to you each week in part by Paragon Bank, serving others, enriching lives.